Hi guys, it's Russell. Welcome to the channel. And today we're going to be doing some basic texturing with the use of images. So you're going to want to go to a website like cc0textures.com and download some texture packs before we get started. This site's completely free and doesn't require a sign up, which is great. So you can peruse their catalog and uh, once you find a material that you like, click in on it and you're going to see some download zip files here. There's going to be a number of different resolutions available to you. 2K usually works for me. So click on the download and then navigate to wherever you saved it. You're going to want to extract all. And you should get uh, four to six images with different names like normal, um, ambient occlusion, roughness, displacement, and color. We're going to be using these in the shading editor in Blender. Okay, so jumping over to Blender, I'm just going to create a, a sphere here to apply the textures to. It can be any shape that you want. Just going up to the Shading Editor tab on the, along the top, and we're going to create a new material. Just expanding the window a little bit. And we're going to press Shift A and search image. Okay, so now we're going to attach the color to the base color of the principal BSDF and then click the open button on the image texture node and navigate to where you extracted those uh, image files. And then we're going to open and select the color file. Okay, so you should see the color of the material that you picked uh, now applied. I've got some faceting here, so I'm just going to go up to the object menu and select Shade Smooth. Adding a subdivision surface modifier, probably not needed in this case, but old habits die hard. Okay, so now we're going to work on the displacement or kind of the bumpiness. We're going to do the same thing. We're going to shift A and then search for image. And then again, shift A and we're going to search for displacement. We're going to connect the displacement up to the displacement of the material output node. And then connect the color to the height of the displacement. So now click on the open button of the image texture node here, then navigate again to the extracted files and select the file called displacement. Okay, so it's always a good idea if you uh, change the color space to non-color data for displacement purposes. And you can see that we now have some bumpiness applied to the sphere, but it looks a little intense. Um, so I think we should maybe take it down a little bit. And you can do so by going to the displacement node and playing with the scale slider here. So I'm going to go 0.1, maybe 0 0.05. And that looks a little bit better. OK. And let's make use of one more of those images that we had in the texture pack, the roughness, which is going to basically be the shininess of our material. So again, Shift A, search image, color, now connect it to the roughness of the principal BSDF, and then again click on open in the image texture node and navigate to where we had those files saved, and then select the one called roughness. So now you can see the material is quite shiny, it looks very wet. And to adjust that, uh, we can use a very popular node, uh, the color ramp. So again, shift A, search color ramp, or RR, and then just drag it over the, the node line there, the node connector, and it will connect up automatically for you. And you can see here, just by playing with the slider on the right, uh, we can adjust the amount of shininess. We can try changing the uh, interpolation method. Um, to get a different look here, I've tried the B-spline. Subtle differences here. If 
but I like that look. Looks a little bit more like leather, but still kind of looks like uh, wet rocks right now. And you can change the scale and the rotation of textures by using uh, the texture mapping coordinates, which you can do quite quickly with the built-in Blender add-on, the Node Wrangler. So I've just pressed Control T to bring up these two nodes. And I'm just going to play with the, the scale here. And the X and Y have increased to 5. And you can see that it's kind of tightened up the, the grain of the leather. And it looks a little bit more like fabric and less like rocks. OK, so just doing the same thing with the color node, Control t and increasing the scale on the x and y to 5. And I'm going to do the same thing again with the roughness. You can actually just have one set and connect it to all three if you'd like to be a little bit more efficient. So that's looking much better. And there you have it. There's some basic texturing techniques with the use of images. I hope that helps, guys. Let me know if you have any questions. Thanks.